Excellent. Thank you very much. So, hi, everybody. Yeah, my name is Graham Faze. I'm the Innovation and Digital Lead at DNV. Uh, thanks very much for the invitation to present at this week's call, where we'll be talking a little bit about our work with National Gas to build a pioneering digital twin of the Future Grid hydrogen facility. National Gas are leading this digital twin project via a consortia comprised of ourselves at DNV, Remtech, the Centre for Modelling and Simulation, and Coventry University Enterprises. Very brief introduction to DMV. We're an independent assurance and risk management company who published the energy industry's first recommended practice on how to quality assure digital twins. That was back in 2020. And absolutely delighted to be joined for this short presentation by Karina Jones, uh, Head of Innovation at National Gas, who are leading this project and whom I will pass to in just a couple of minutes time. National Gas, of course, own and operate the GB National Gas Transmission System. I'll start by setting the theme. So at DMV, we're very proud to have the Spade Adam research and test site within our portfolio. Uh, located in Cumbria, this is a world leading facility offering industry the opportunity to carry out large scale industrial trials in a controlled and secure real life environment. And DMV Spade Adam is home to Future Grid, the national gases or national gases hydrogen demonstrator project. Phase one of the physical future grid project is the first of many steps towards a full scale conversion of the existing national transmission system uh, with a view to, to transporting hydrogen. And the project has involved construction, constructing a test facility from decommissioned assets that is now being used to carry out a wide range of hydrogen tests in an offline environment, really to demonstrate its effect on, on NTS assets, as well, of course, uh, the future operation of, of the network. What we're especially proud of is the fact that DMV Spade Adam is fully connected from a networking and comms perspective. And in addition to the physical future grid, a cloud-based digital twin has been created. Virtual Future Grid, the first of many such digital twin projects at site. What is Virtual Future Grid? Uh, well, the first phase of that project set out to prove that one of the ways in which to manage the complexity that hydrogen brings is through a digital twin. The first phase ran as a network innovation allowance project over the course of 2022 and resulted in the development of a virtual model using LiDAR. Uh, the first phase of the project supported the testing of some initial concepts around the delivery of data through a live link. It laid the basis for the development of an asset information model. It aimed to prove the benefits of an API first approach that could link to national gas business systems. And it resulted in an extensive study that resulted in the selection of a number of priority use cases. The second phase of Virtual Future Grid is about taking those proving principles and turning them into something that is real. So using over 200 sensors, 11 and a half million monthly data points, and drawing down data from tests for different hydrogen concentrations. Um, so with that in mind, I will now pass to Corinna to take you through the details of what's been achieved so far with this project and what is planned by way of next steps. So over to you, Corinna. Thank you, Graham. Um, next slide. And if uh, I can start with just a bit of why we're doing this at all. Um, so I head up the innovation team and we are looking at decarbonising the gas network across the UK. And with that, there's a lot of data that needs to be managed, both um, historic data of when the pipeline was built, but also live data of how it's running today um, and what it will look like in the future. So phase one gave us the virtual twin and the data twin, um, but that is it's not perfect and it's great on its own, um, great for certain use cases, but in general um, doesn't give us the insights that we need um, for the hydrogen transition. So phase two is looking at bringing those um, two layers together, so the virtual layer and the data layer in this picture, um, and trying to do that without creating any new systems um, from scratch. We want to embed this into our current um, data network that we have within National Gas um, and enable easy access to the information. Today, a lot of the information that's in the data layer is in folders, in a, in a folder structure that somebody has to go through uh, manually to try and find the bits of information they want. Really, we want a contextual digital twin that can enable us to analyse the data quickly and easily moving forward. Um, so if you go to the next slide, please. As a regulated business, we have to provide insights to why we want to do this. Uh, we have to obtain funding from our regulator Ofgem, and in that we need to showcase why it's important and what benefits it will provide in the long term. 
Uh, we have selected Future Grid for this project um, because it is an offline facility, but demonstrates all of the types of assets that you would see on our network and all of the types, types of data sets that we might, uh, might need to see uh, moving forward. It also provides a good representation of what our wider network would look like when we're looking at a digital twin. The approach that we've taken is to um, bring the virtual and the data twin together um, using an API gateway um, and an API that will link into a, uh, a virtual model um, that everybody can view and access easily. Um, whilst we're at FutureGrid, it enables us to have a bit of a sandbox and a play. So if we want to add more sensors or take sensors away, um, we can do that whilst we're on this facility without damaging anything um, that is currently running on the gas network. Uh, next slide, please. So we've selected three use cases um, out of probably around 60 use cases that we've identified um, for the future. Um, the first one is all around accessing our data and disseminating information to the wider business. And that could be a range of people from the engineers developing the system right through to the operational staff um, managing the network today. Uh, the second use case is looking at project visualization. So whilst we're building the future good facility, um, especially in phase two, uh, we can demonstrate how a digital twin can be used to manage a project um, and disseminate to the project managers and the external suppliers engaging in that activity. <coughs> <laughs> the final use case is um, looking at data analytics and taking the data that we're seeing from the future good facility, extrapolating that into the future so that we can identify what, what the impact of hydrogen would be on the network um, in the long run. So if we go to the final slide, um, we've got a short demo um, that shows where we are at the moment. So we are at an early stage, um, which we're just trying to get some stakeholder feedback from on what the system might look like moving up from a, a GIS level um, view right into a site specific view and accessing the individual elements, uh, which we'll show, show you shortly, which will provide information on the, the temperature, the pressure, um, and that's all live information from the site today. The project closes in March, um, so this is still a, uh, a draft version, um, and we hope to gain some stakeholder feedback between now and then um, to enable us to then deploy it through the next couple of years across the whole network. Uh, thank you very much. So our first question <coughs> is to both projects is they both incorporate data and information about assets and processes that would be valuable in the wrong hands. How do you approach security? Um, very similar. So obviously we work with CNI data on a regular basis. We know how to manage that and make sure it is safe. Um, at the moment, we are um, weighing up the requirement for the use cases to see live data instantaneously or delayed data. Um, and if it is delayed data, it is much easier to, to manage in terms of security and um, that's probably the way we'll go to route will go down. Great, thank you. And Quina, a uh, question for yourself and Graham is does National Gas intend to connect their digital twin to other utility networks? Yes, and uh, we're working with the ESO on the virtual energy system. So that's the um, that's the electricity system operator, but also the gas distribution networks. Uh, we're working with them on their projects and the other electricity networks across the UK. Very good. And a linked question, if I could, please, is in is any of your data available for public use as well? Do you anticipate your digital twins to be connected to other digital twins, for example, a plant level digital twin? So two parts there. I know you've answered the second already, but the first part is around the data available for public use. Uh, yes, so there is already data out there for public use and we will be using that data. There is data being included in the digital twin, which is currently not available. Um, and we are working through what will be available in the long run and what won't. Very good. Um, and back to Kryn, if I could please, is how challenging has it been to connect with other utility networks? Um, it varies. We've all got different systems. We've all developed those systems separately. Um, so we're now working together to understand how we can really in, uh, connect those together. We're trying to prevent the need for everybody to change their systems. Um, so using what they've got today, um, but putting a nice uh, gateway between them so that we can we can access data in, in the right manner. It really requires uh, 
timestamps and ontology that really enable that. And that's what we're focused on at the moment. Very good. And our last question, if I could, is does your project take any learnings from the hydrogen innovation initiative highlighted by Jonathan Airy at the Advanced Manufacturing Research Centre or High Value Manufacturing Catapult? Yes, um, so I am on the industrial steering board for um, the Hydrogen Innovation Initiative and we are engaging with them also. Um, but I think we probably need to do a lot more work to take learnings from across other industries and bring those back into the project also. Very good. And actually, our final question here is, do you envisage sharing your journey of connecting these networks together? And I guess we can apply this to both projects. Envisage sharing your lessons learned from your projects with the wider community. Yeah, I think so. And I off Gemma very keen on this, um, but also uh, Desna. So um, if, if you have any questions, please get in touch with me personally and we can uh, look to share as much as possible.